Grand rising, grand arrival, grand return. Peace and blessings to the righteous and repentant alike. I'm Sophia of the Americana Band of Indians, and this is our Astrotorography Sun Sign Decan update video. We are moving into Libra season. We are moving into the um, Equilux. And so our Sun Sign Decan is going to update. And this is really interesting because we um, started out sort of on the opposite side of this energy. And now we're uh, coming back around to the flip side of it. So, I mean, not started. Did I say started? We've been dealing with Two of Wands energy and Two of Swords energy since we started doing this, since I started doing this. But now we are um, working with Swords energy. So Swords energy is always going to be slightly different. Let's take a look. All right. So the Two of Swords, which is the card we have here, is Indecisions, Difficulties, Indecision, solutions, and difficulties. This particular card I call the intuition card because the lady is blindfolded. She's got these two swords so she can protect herself. However, she can't see the enemy. There's, she has to use her intuition to know when there's an enemy to protect her. Um, otherwise, she may end up inadvertently slicing off her head because these are big giant swords over exaggerated for a reason. Um, she could have to fight a big enemy, but she can't see the enemy. She's got to know the enemy is there, which means she has to know herself, where her body is in relation to these swords, and then how to potentially wield these swords without hurting herself. This is a very detailed oriented card. This is a energy that is um, the foundation of it is knowing who you are and where your energy lies. So for the last three months with the cups energy, we have been looking at the difference between your energy and the entities energies that work with you. Um, first, first looking at, um, with the two with the two of cups, you know, celebrating with them and all of this stuff all the way through the Ten of Cups where you're like, okay, but we've been doing all this partying together and I don't have nothing to show for it. What is going on here? So that's been what that is. That was a check on the inside with the physical energies that work with you so you can know the difference between those energies that are outside of you and the ones that are inside of you. Now the proof is in the pudding. You have to know so much where your body is, where you stand, that you can defend yourself even if no one else is around. If you are the only one that's there to help yourself, you have to be able to defend yourself. And that's the kind of check that's going on. So what most people do during sword season, again, swords is Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, is they cut things off. They give things hard endings. But that's not what this time period is for. This time period, if we're going to transmute it, is for soft endings. Um, you know, swords are final endings. Um, I always say that, and wands are um, corrections, right? And so, swords are um, Mercury, in, I mean, not Mercury, Mars energy, and wands are Saturn energy. So, Saturn is corrector. He's going to correct things. He's going to make things right. He's going to bring things back into order. Mars, our warrior, our willpower is going to say, cut that so-and-so off and let's keep them going but your warrior um is going to be it's going to have to be overjected for uh instead to go with corrections what what do i mean by that meaning it's really really easy for you to just give it all up and walk away especially if you haven't been doing the work and you got got during um, Virgo season and you didn't get your contract in and all that stuff that I've been talking about now for two months. Um, you didn't do any of that stuff and you come into this, you know, Equilux period um, after having come through this, um, what do you call it? Eclipse. And you didn't actually do the work that was necessary and you got your inheritance snatched from you um, and now you have to be cared for. That's on you. 
you know, you may choose to, again, check out. Again, in my opinion, I don't have no official research, but I believe a lot of people check out during this season because of the simple fact that they were supposed to receive the physical abundance in Virgo season, but they didn't do the work. And so because they didn't do the work in Virgo season to receive the physical abundance, they missed their opportunity. Like, it's basically over. Like, that time of the year is gone. And even the next time of year that comes up, which is going to be pentacles, you're supposed to be transmuting that into um, ideas, into um, from Venus energy, which is pentacles, coins, into um, Jupiter energy, which is ideas and just general expanding in love. So basically, like, you've missed it for the year. Like, you had June, July, and August. Well, uh, really, July, August, September during cup season to, I mean, to really, really put your firm foundation into these pentacles. And if you didn't do it, now it's time to make necessary cuts, okay? But not now it would naturally, it would feel natural to make necessary cuts. But really what you're supposed to do, like you can see here, is transmute the energy. So, is that correct? All right, let's just say that it is. All right, so we have, um, no, I don't think so. No, it is in the first house. Okay. No, 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 it's not. No, it's in the second house. So it's, that, that, that slide is wrong. It's the eighth house because we're still in Virgo. So, yeah, it's supposed to be the eighth house of Aries. So let's look at the two of wands through the lens of the eighth house in Aries. So the two of wands is indecisions, no, plans, travel, and new ideas. This I call our outside influence card and our Jezebel card. So now, now would be the time to take command over the Jezebel spirit, meaning this Jezebel spirit has been plaguing us for a long time ever since we got into two of, um, two of wands energy in our, um, in our, in, our, in our north node, um, two of wands being the Aries energy in our north node, now it's time for you to take command over her, to take domination, uh, to dominate over this energy. And so what does that look like? Through the lens of the 8th house in Aries, let's talk about 8th house in Aries, which is to be active when searching for the truth, meaning... You take command over Jezebel by actively looking for where she has root in your life. So if you've been doing the work, you're not really going to find too much. But if you're new to this, you know, you're just getting started. The Jezebel energy is bitterness. It's bitterness. And you have to root out the bitterness in your life. And so you have to be active. Um, uh, for the 8th house in Aries, you have to be active when searching for this truth. But when we get into 7th house of Aries, you don't want to be aggressive when cooperation is required. So you may see that you need this spirit, not in you to be bitter, but to be bitter into your enemies. You know, to show the bitter. Because a lot of what's going on, because they use Neptune, they are projecting bitterness onto you while they themselves do not appear to be bitter. But no, they, you might need to work with Jezebel to send Jezebel over to whom the bitterness needs to be. The bitter cup has to be passed on to someone. If you're not going to be taking the bitter cup, the bitter cup has to be passed to someone. And so if you have not done the check, the you know, all of the stuff we already talked about while we're coming through cup season and you're not comfortable now with working with both sides, then how are you going to um, bring about the karma that's necessary? Remember now, once we come through this portal, this... Um, Equilux portal, we are now the light of the creator. The creator's light is dim, so that means we're the light. We are going to light up. And so in order for you to light up, you have to be sure of what the creator looks like. You have to know what how he dealt with you is how you should deal with others. And so 
the best thing that can be done for someone I've heard many times is that judgment is called on them because it gives them the opportunity to deal with the stuff so that they have a chance to get out of this life and not have to repeat it over and over again. Judgment is the best thing that can be called, but do the angels do judgments? No, you have to use the negatively polarized entities for judgment. So all this time we've been getting a handle on what Jezebel is. Now it's going to be time to use Jezebel to bring about the bitter cup to the people who need it. And it's not like you got to call people out by name. Nobody, I don't know if that's necessarily required, but you one thing's for, two, for sure and two things for certain. You have to make sure that you are not being given the bitter cup when it's supposed to go to someone else. And the only one who could make sure that happens is you. You can't put that off on your spirit team. You can't put that off on the creator because we have free will. So it is your choice, literally your physical choice, to choose to take on bitterness when in fact it's for someone else to take. And if, again, energy is not created or destroyed, it's merely transferred. It has to be transferred to whom it belongs, to whom sent it to you. Lots of return to senders. Um, during this time because these people have to get they have to learn the lesson like there's no getting out of this life cycle without learning the lesson now they could have learned the lesson the easy way like most of us chose to do by listening to these videos and really getting into alignment with the energy but these people having all the same knowledge gained in wicked ways still chose to send wickedness to you they have to learn the lesson, and that's what this is about, looking out, calling Jezebel, saying, hey, you know, I think that person needs some bitterness. That person needs to experience what they sent to me. This person is not learning the lesson the right way. Maybe they are the ones who have the issue, and it's not me. You know, especially if it's, it's revealed to you who is doing these things to you. Um, what spirits are, you have to then call, you have to be the light. And the light is sometimes, sometimes the light is, um, what do we call it? An trying energy It's flowing. And sometimes it has harsh aspects, which is a square. Um, now it's basically like square energy. Like you have to be a square to these people who are still calling out wickedness on you and still doing their magic, which has been suspended. Now at this point, we suspended all hermetic magic two years ago. People doing hermetic magic without the proper protocols, they're the ones who are in trouble, not you. So you have to call them out and say, hey, you're not supposed to be doing this kind of magic. You don't have the authorization. That means you are forcing entities, you're forcing entities into slavery. That makes you a slave master. And we have rules for dealing with slave masters. In this country, there's, you're, you're not allowed to be a slave master. Matter of fact, I'll tell y'all something. Um, one of the things that we're doing in our family banking group is emancipation or emancipating our numbers that they assign to us, the, the social security number and the EIN numbers, all these numbers. Why? Because they, each number, your driver's license, all these numbers, we were never supposed to be numbered. It makes me think of, um, John saw the number that. Yeah, John saw the number that no man could number. No man is a number. You're a, you're a living person. You know this is why he could he saw a number that no man could number because you can't number people. People are not numbers. That is a fallacy that is perpetuated by big gematria, man. We people are not numbers. You cannot be numbered. Okay, you are a living individual. How could you possibly be numbered? So all these numbers are slaves. They, they work for you in the background. You don't even know what you're doing. So one of the documents that we do is an emancipation document freeing all these slaves. Literally set the slaves free. We are not supposed to have slaves. And so these people, if they're continuing to do this hermetic magic, are using these different entities and and deities and whatever as slaves and they've been freed when we canceled the dumb diverses two years ago two and a half years ago at this point we freed the slaves they have been freed all the saints all the martyrs all the entities and deities angels and everybody else they were freed we freed them so no they're not allowed to take them back into captivity and they're not allowed to contract with them. They're just slave owners. And slave owners have to go to jail. They're not allowed to 
Um, because you can work with the spirits. Nobody is saying again that you can't work with the spirits, but you can't command them. That's that's out of alignment. You can ask them, hey, I need help with this. I'm trying to figure this out. Can you please help me? And you come with politeness and humbleness, just like you wanted these people to come to you with a job. Please come and work in my factory. I'll pay you enough money to live. That's what we wanted. You have to treat others how you want to be treated. And that's what this energy is all about. The transference of um, going in with an aggressive. And just to back this up. Mars is in Cancer. So remember I said Mars rules swords. Mars is in Cancer. Cancer is the most emotional card. In, and it's in Cancer not for a little while. It's in Cancer for like six months altogether. Like it is the longest time it's spent in Cancer. They don't even know how long ago this happened because it's a retrograde. And it goes back into um, um, Gemini for a little while and then forward into um, back in the cancer. So, yeah, no, this is the longest amount of time Mercury, uh, Mars has spent in cancer in a long time. So that means we are supposed to be very in contact with our emotions. This energy, instead of being super aggressive, is supposed to be um, nurturing where necessary. But again, we've been working on the words and the wisdom with our Venus card, our values card um, coming up now um, in the, what house is that? Ninth house of Gemini. So we've been working on, um, you know, our values and stuff like that. So now we've got to integrate this stuff in. You've got to know which energy is yours and which energy is not. And you've got to look out upon the earth. Again, I said this a few weeks ago. It doesn't matter who's, everybody gets to cast a vote. But what really matters is who gets to count the votes. And the only people who are going to be able to count the votes are the people who are spiritually capable of handling this type of stuff everyone else doesn't their votes are not going to count because e e the votes are going to count if they want the same goal um but if they're not on this level where we're working through this stuff we're working through working with the positive side the negative side and really getting this thing like taken care of on a soul level so that we can move forward in excellence if they're not trying to bring about excellence onto this planet these people are not going to be allowed to stay i mean they're going to be a lot they're not going to be able to stay because they're not going to be able to handle the vibration but what's more their votes are not going to count if you are voting for destruction if you're voting for getting off the planet you're going to get off the planet it's you. You're, whatever you are projecting out onto someone else is going to be projected onto you. That is what Neptune does. This is why this whole thing of um, them making black people think white people are the devil. We are then the devils that are being projected devilish energy onto. And then we get the demons. Like because they got so many people believing these white people are the demons. Or the same thing with white people. They got so many people... So many of them believing black people are the devil, that the devil is going to be projected back onto them. I mean, this is how things work. It's all about transmutation. Everything is transmutation. You're always constantly transmuting the energy, except you don't know what transmutation is. We've been talking about this. This is why I have the daily transmutation reports. Like, this is so critically important. And so many people are still witching death and destruction and reveling in people's death and destruction and identifying their death and destruction instead of working on themselves that they have missed the boat. The boat is gone. Like, this is it. The judgment is over. We are in... We are in swords energy. You get judged during cups energy because you get judged on your behavior and how you act. And when the swords time come... That's when the wheat and the chaff get separated. And guess what? The wheat, when we get into um, Capricorn season, the wheat gets measured out and you make money from it. And the chaff gets sent into the fire. We don't need chaff. I'm sorry. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but we don't need chaff. Chaff does not have value. And a lot of people are making themselves valueless because... They are not actually handling or dealing with the energies that are coming in, learning themselves, and really being able to dig down into this energy, which is what we have been doing since. Um, and this, the good thing about this, too, is we started this. We've gone through a whole season, the whole cup season together, right? We started this in cup season. Um, I started this with the equinox. 
the or the solstice, the summer solstice, the equinox. That's why I started this. And so now we're on the equilux where the light and the dark is going to switch. We had an eclipse that also says that we're going into a new portal. The people who picked up and said, yeah, I'm going to do this work. These people are going to be the ones who count the votes and the ones who did not do the work. They still said, no, I'm not giving up my revenge that I want on these other people. They're not going to be counting the votes. There's, there's just, we even have an eclipse to eclipse those people out. I mean, we have no Capricorn lunations. I mean, no Capricorn lunations next year, which means nobody, everybody's being judged this year. This is the year of the judgment. And you either get put back into the doom loop with the Capricorn new moon that's right at the end of the year, or you're going to move forward and you'll, you'll get to uh, be in your regular alchem alchemical state. That's, that's really what I see happening. So, um, I hope this has been helpful to people. Um, of course, we're going to be covering this energy day to day, especially as it relates to now being in Aries instead of dealing. We're also going to be dealing with this, these energies in, um, Libra and uh, well Libra too so now we're going to have a juxtaposition between the Aries and the Libra and they're reversed on the other side so you're going to have to be a skilled person to get to, to get through these energies all of cup season was preparing us for these energies here because you're going to have to know what needs to be cut versus what needs to be corrected and you have to get it right each and every time that's the time period that we're in and we have enough knowledge of how this works that we should be able to do this so it shouldn't be too difficult if you have done the work and if you haven't done the work i suggest you hurry up you know i suggest you hurry up so thank you for joining us for this um astrotorography sun sign decan update peace and blessings of course if you want to get the full month of these slides you will go to our schumann mystery school where we have this and some descriptions and some uh, other things that go along with it in a downloadable PDF. So peace and blessings, and we'll see you tomorrow.